Welcome friends, in this video, we'll learn about subqueries again. All right, so crank up a project and we will work with sales order detail and the product tables again in AdventureWorks. All right, so before we do anything else, we have to just take a couple minutes to establish some preliminary motivation for combining things a certain way so it makes sense. So let's do that first. So I will type first, select star, and I've made the font smaller to fit all of the code. So select star from sales dot sales order detail, and then at the next stage here is select star from production dot product. You can give these a run here, highlight them. You can run them at the same time after highlighting, and on the bottom now pull up this panel here, and the other one should also become visible on the bottom. You see? I want to see both for a particular reason, which is this one here. Sometimes these things jump. If you press, you see they will jump in some somewhat random fashion. <laughs> Take a look. Remember that in this table, the sales order detail table, which is the first panel up top, you've got this product ID. And next to each product ID, you've got the order quantity of the product. The product ID, if you scroll through that column a little bit carefully, you'll observe that the product ID repeats. Because it repeats, you can group it. And if you can group it, then perhaps you can find, for example, an answer to this question. How many product IDs in all for 777 were ordered? Uh, how many 772s were ordered? And how many 773s were ordered, you see? You can answer those kinds of questions. So let's do that first. All right. So here, make sure you put this under sales, that sales order detail. I will say the following. I would say group by product ID because it's a repeating quantity in a sales order detail. And of course, if you do that, it's going to give you an error because you need some kind of aggregating function. So instead of start, I'm going to type sum order QTY like that. Sum, not sub. All right, give that a go here. And that looks like this. Okay. And let's add the product ID that might be helpful here to clarify things. All right, let's do that one more time. So all we have done is grouped by the product ID. And this tells us, for example, that the product ID 925, 625 times. Product ID 779, 2394 times on the orders. You see that? That's what this is telling us. It's grouping by product ID and counting the total order quantity essentially for each product ID. And now the question is, can we combine that summarized grouped information with the product table in some meaningful way? So I will show you a way of doing this, okay? Well, first of all, remember, if you go into the product table and you execute that, remember, we have the product ID right here. So we have a column named product ID, and remember, we also have the product ID column in the sales order detail. Even in a grouped version of it, we still have it. So clearly, we have a field that can be used to connect the two tables. I'm thinking as logically as I can here. And at the next stage, take a look. We're going to take this whole thing, which summarizes information by product ID inside the sales order detail, and take a look. Instead of typing select star, where we do the portion for the product table, I will type this. I will say product ID, like that. And then I'm going to put a comma. And I'm going to add the color here also. So I will type color, like that. And this will work fine. Right, you select it, you give it a go. So product ID, color null. Product ID 317 is black. Product ID 330, no color. Maybe it doesn't apply. Who knows? So that looks like this. And now we've got this and we've got this. And we want to join those in some meaningful fashion. So take a look here. At the next stage in the process, I will literally take this, hold select, and pull it down. And I got to break this up the right way over multiple lines and space it out in a meaningful way. So this is what we have so far. I've placed this original thing here under 
the from clause. And I'm going to put a comma. So it looks like this. And as soon as you do that, notice select gets underlined red. And it says incorrect syntax near select. So can we fix that somehow? And the answer is yes. Put this entire thing right here within a parenthesis like this. And now, again, we still have a little red squiggly up here. So now, right after production.product, type as prod, as shown here, we've aliased the product table so that it's a little bit shorter. And we still have the little red squiggly, like that. So I'm going to just break this up over multiple lines at this stage. Not that that step is necessary. I'm just doing it to make the code look a little more compact. And I will say here as subquery. And notice now the red squigglies immediately are a little bit different. So even the appearance of the squigglies counts. Every mouse over subquery and it says no column was specified for column two of subquery. That's one bit. And now look at product ID. It says ambiguous column name. And as soon as you see ambiguous, you think to yourself, a connection has been established by two tables with a shared column name. And now all of this code doesn't know whether the column name should come from one table or the other one. You see? So the appearance of the queries looks as shown here. You've got the red squigglies. And they both mean different things in this context. We need to fix that up a little bit more, okay? Now, it says, no column was specified for column two of subquery. Well, remember, product ID is the first column. And sum order quantity is the second one. And when you have a mouse, it says, no column was specified. So what we can do, perhaps, is type as total QTY for total quantity and then the red squiggly is removed okay i hope you see that and once again the product id however is still underlined red so i want you to pause the video and ask yourself this question how would i refix the ambiguity problem think back to what we've learned previously Okay, so remember, when you have ambiguity, you can just make things more clear by specifying, as an example, something like this, prod, the name of a table that contains it. So remember, prod here is an alias for the product table from this line right there. Okay, so let's give all of this a go and see what we get as a first stage. Hit execute. And so we've got the production.product ID, you've got the color. And now we want to show the total quantity also next to each product ID. And to do that, it's not showing right now, as you can see. I'm going to type after color, total QTY, and then make sure on the previous line you put a comma to separate the fields. Okay, so let's give this another go. Hit execute. And you've got the total QTY, and it's showing for product ID. Number one. At the next stage here, we can refine this a little bit. What do I mean? Take a look here. Let's take a look inside this table. I'm going to say select star from and then sales dot sales order detail from that table. And then I will say, for example, where product ID equals one. That's all you want to do. Just pick up product ID number one. Give it a go here. And as you can see in the messages, nothing shows with that. So what is that telling us? That's telling us an important piece of information that if I just run this code in this form, this entire block that joins two tables, is giving me product ID one also, which is coming from the production table in this particular case. And I want to refine it in the following sense. Remember, if I run that block, I've just highlighted the product ID number one, 
doesn't appear in the sales order detail. And I know that because when I try to run this where, it's not present anywhere. You see, there's no record selected. So take a look at the next stage. I'm going to erase that. That's why I wanted to show you that step. And now take a look at the next step. I will say where prod product ID equals subquery and then dot product ID. So before we do anything else, let me take this and run this. And then look at the messages. How many records? You've got 134,064 rows for this by itself. Okay, and now we apply the where together. And you've got 266 rows. Clearly, there's a big difference, right? A big impact when you add the where. So here, what is this telling us finally? The product ID 707, which remember is coming from the production table according to the prod dot product ID. And the color is red. Again, that's right here coming from the product table. And the total quantity, if you think about it, is coming from this subquery that groups by product ID and counts the total number of items of that ID placed on orders, okay? All right, so obviously this one is more advanced. I think it's kind of interesting to challenge the mind this way. Let me write this down a little bit in some English. So remember, what are we saying? We're saying this. So a group by product ID inside the sales order detail table, okay? And then further, and count the total, the number of orders for each product ID, okay? That's a useful piece of information. It tells you, for example, obviously which product is popular. And then after that, use the output from step one basically as information or as a table so to speak you join with the product table to say things like this product id 707 color black sold 6266 units so I hope you see to some extent the practical motivation for what we've done here and what kind of new information this approach reveals. Okay, friends, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.